Good morning, my students. Hope you're fine and doing well in this day. Um, hope that every one of you is doing well and that you are staying at home due to the coronavirus and everything. And wish uh, you all well and wish the country to pass from these hard days. Now, I want to talk with you today about our lecture. It's going to be about a new drama, a new play uh, called The School for Scandal. School of Scandal was made by Richard Brinsley Sheridan. Now, let's talk briefly about the writer Richard Brinsley Sheridan. He was born in Dublin, Ireland, but moved to England at the age of eight, and he never returned back. He actually came from a literary family. His mother was also a writer and a novelist. His grandfather was a good friend of Jonathan Swift. He fell in love with a famous singer called Elizabeth Linley. For his need of money, he wrote his first play in 1775. The name of the play was called The Rivals. It started his career as a star playwright. His second play was called The Donor. It was made the following year. And his th third play, which is going to be The School for Scandal, was actually in 1777. And it actually gained a very wide claim. Sheridan also saved in the parliament and in different governmental rules over 32 years. And he became one of the most respected writers of that time. In 1808, at the time of Drury Lane Theatre was burned down due to a fire, he actually announced his bankruptcy and he was removed from his position in the parliament. Now, after knowing some knowledge about um, the writer, we are going to talk about the novel, the play itself. Its full title is called The School for Scandal. It was written in 1777. The genre is related to comedy, and we discussed the meaning or the different types of plays before. We took one as a tragedy, as for Hamlet, and this one is going to be the comedy, the comic one, School for Scandal. The play was written, or it was actually written in London, England, and the setting of the play was in London, England. It began as two separate plays, one about a circle of gossips that was led or that was made by a lady called Sneerwell, which we are going to know more about her in the play club. The other part of the play is about the Teasels and their marriage and how the relation is going to develop throughout the play. Now, let's know more about the play. Any play or most of the plays actually had like a historical context. Like as you know before, like we discussed about Hamlet, we know that Shakespeare wrote Hamlet in relation to the historical background at that time and that Elizabeth was going to die at that time and there was no heir to take over the throne and uh, how the state of Denmark at that time was in uh, a state of chaos and no one knows about the future throne and everything. Again, the school for scandal has its own historical context that based on it, the play was written. As we know, the play was written in 1777 and the wealth of the family called the surface that mainly the play revolves around 
was actually the same family had to inherit some money from Sir Oliver Surface, which was known to have spent the last 16 years in the East Indies. These times or these years were at times of growth at the East India Company. This British company enjoyed a monopoly over the trade and it had an expanding region of South and Southeast Asia. This company actually collected taxes in the form of money and goods from peasants, from poor farmers, and it shipped precious commodities like silk, tea, spices, cotton, things like this. And it actually shipped it to region, from the region to the rest of the world. The British colonists who went to the East Indies often had or was known were known to have reign of corruption. They stole the money that should have been sent to the company's shareholders or to the government in the form of taxation to themselves. Not even also to mention the local people that they actually took the money from them in the first place. The, the, the fortunes that were generated in this part was all going to the wealthy British families like the surface family, which was represented by Sir Oliver Surface. The whole system was deeply unfair. The taxes colonized people to pay uh, didn't support their own government, but they were, were all sent to the country to increase the British wealth. During that time, it was known to be the time of famine, from 1769 to 1773. The British East India Company didn't cease collecting taxes from the peasants only, but even went so far as to increase the taxes. Due to this action, many people have died as a result. So this is actually to give you a head of the situation at that time, the historical background at the time of the, novel, the play that was written. Now let's move on to the important characters or to the characters in the play. One of the most important characters in the play was called Lady Teasel. Lady Teasel was a young, pretty, headstrong and intelligent. She is the young wife of another character called Sir Peter Teasel. She was raised in the countryside, but although she was raised in the countryside, she quickly adopted city manners, how to talk like them, how to eat like them, how to act like them, and so on. She learned how the gossip mill operates from a group of high society gossips, which was mainly, or were mainly led by Lady Sneewell. Lady Teasel and her husband, Sir Peter, were arguing all the time, often over how much money he allows her, as Lady Teasel wishes to spend huge sums on flowers, carriages, and other luxuries. Lady Teasel is considering taking Joseph Surface as, or as a lover, uh, but she didn't yet decide it, whether to, that she wants to keep the relationship platonic. Now, let's move on to another character. Um, one second. Okay, let's move on to another character. Sir Peter Teasel. And as we said before, he is Lady Teasel's husband. Sir Peter Teasel. Okay, Sir Peter Teasel was 
an older man with fixed habits. He married Lady Teasel seven months before the play begins and is having trouble adapting to his married life. Sir Peter believes that he is always right and he is inflexible in his arguments with his wife. He admires her skill at arguing her point and finds her even more attractive for the way she stands up to him. Sir Peter is also serving as a guardian to Maria, who is in love with Charles Surface. Sir Peter opposes their match. He's an old friend of Sir Oliver Surface, and as we know, that Charles and Joseph are his sons. Sir Peter, Sir Peter admires Joseph and strongly disapproves of Charles. Now, let's move on to the other part. Lady Sneerwell. Lady Sneerwell is a sharp-tongued, hypocritical character. Uh, she is also a gossip monger. She is the center of a group of highly society men and women who spend their time gossiping and creating scandals. Lady Sneerwell ruins reputations by telling stories to the gossip columns and by paying others to forge incriminating letters. She's, also, she's always paying money to make up stories and in order to destroy the reputations of the people to enter the play. In love with Charles Surface, Lady Newell conspires with Joseph Surface to prevent an engagement. So she, Sneerwell, tries to make a conspiracy with Joseph Surface to prevent an engagement between Charles Surface and Maria who Joseph hopes to marry for her money. Moving on to another character, which is Joseph Surface or Mr. Surface, as one of Sir Oliver's sons. Joseph Surface or Mr. Surface, he is a selfish, greedy, hypocrite and a liar. The older surface brother pretends to be a man of sentiment, a man of emotion, but he is actually a sentimental man. This means that he speaks eloquently about the proper, the moral way to live, but he doesn't practice what he preaches. So he always believes or talks about how people should behave or act, but he actually never does what he believes in. Instead, Joseph is conspiring with Lady Sneerwell to prevent an engagement between his brother Charles and Maria, whom he wants to marry for her money. At the same time, he is trying to seduce Lady Teasel, even though Sir Peter Teasel is one of his greatest admirers. When tested, Joseph's true character shows through as he fails to, to show generosity to the poor or proper respect to, for the family traditions. So as we can see, he's only a person who believes in conspiring, he aims for money, and he doesn't even respect one of his friends. Another character is going to be Charles Surface. Charles Surface is, let's move on to the PowerPoint. Okay. Charles Surface, we're moving on this. Charles Surface, this is John's, uh, Joseph's uh, brother. He is a warm hearted but hard hearting man. The younger Surface brother is known around town for his extravagance. Charles has spent all of the massive fortune he was given by his uncle, Sir Oliver, and is in huge quantities of debt. 
but he is presented as essentially moral and good at heart. Because of his qualities of loyalty, kindness, and unpretentiousness, it is suggested that he will eventually mend his ways and grow into a respectable representative of the state family. Charles is in love with Maria and ultimately becomes her fiancé and the heir to Sir Oliver Serpice. Moving on to another character, which is going to be Sir Oliver or Mr. Pommy. Okay, let's move on here. Sir Oliver Surface and Mr. Stanley. Sir Oliver Surface, the father of Joseph and Charles Surface, he is a wealthy uncle. After 16 years of doing business in the East Indies, colonial India, Sir Oliver returned to London to pick one of his nephews as an heir to his enormous fortune. Seeking to learn the two young men's two characters, Sir Oliver, who is very concerned with ideas of the family honor and reputation, assumes two false identities that of a poor relative seeking charity, Mr. Stanley, and of a money lender, Mr. Premium. So, as we can understand, that Sir Oliver, which is Joseph and Charles' uncle, he pretends or he actually has like two identities in the play. One of them as a poor relative in a charity, which is called Mr. Stanley, the other one as a money lender, Mr. Prince. Sir Oliver has never married and teases his good friend, Sir Teasel, for marrying a young wife. Another character in the play is Mr. Rowley. Here is Mr. Rowley. Mr. Rowley. He is the former steward to the surface brother's deceased father. Mr. Rowley is a trusted Cavendish advisor and go-between for the surface and teaser family. He is an eminently reasonable man and generally serves to clarify confusion and to further the action of the play. Unlike Sir Peter, Mr. Rowley sees through Joseph's hypocrisy and recognizes Charles' essential goodness. After this character, we have Maria, which is known to be the lover of Charles, whom he wants to marry, but at the same time, Joseph, Thurfus, the, the brother of Charles, wants also to seduce her and to marry her for her money. She is a recently orphaned young woman. She is the ward of Sir Peter and thus heirs to his fortune. She is in love with Charles Surface, but is also being courted by Joseph Surface and Sir Benjamin Backwine. Maria is portrayed as being very moral and sensitive. She hates gossip in particular and therefore finds the conversation of the gossips who congregate at Lady Sneerwell's house appalling. She really hates them. Another character we have in the play is Moses. Moses is an honest Hebrew. He is a Jewish moneylender. It is suggested that he is more scarpless than other Jews, but his character nevertheless embodies several stereotypes about Jews prevalent in British society in the late 18th century, which is known to be greedy for money, give you back the money, but with benefits and so on. He also seeks to shift blame for the hardship caused by his enormous rate of interest onto others. So he 
all the time. Let's say, for example, you gave him some money, he lends you some money, he's going to get back the money with huge interests. Another character we have other than Moses. These are actually the main characters, Joseph, Charles, Maria, Lady Teasel, Sir Peter, Mr. Loney, and Moses. Moving on to the minor characters in the play. We have Mrs. Condor. She is a high society lady who spends her time spreading rumors. Mrs. Condor pretends to be good-natured and honest, but is actually just as malicious as the other gossips. Her name ironically refer references the word Condor, which is another word for honest. Another minor character is Sir Benjamin Backbite. He is a young gentleman who hopes to marry Maria. Sir Benjamin spends his time spreading gossip about members of society. He is also an amateur poet and writes rhymes mocking people he knows. The word backbite means to say unkind things about someone who is not present, which is his nature. We also have Mr. Crabtree. He is also a gossip who invents extremely specific details when spreading full stories. Mr. Cartree is hoping to help his nephew, Sir Benjamin Woe Maria. So he is helping him to marry or to give her her. A crab tree, which is a symbol for this name, is a tree that produces only sour apples. And so his name is a comment on his character and its own sourceness and the way he gossips and try to manipulate people. Another minor character in the play is the snake, an amoral opportunist. Snake is paid by Lady Smearwell to place false stories in the gossip columns and to forge incriminating letters. Another character is Careless, and as you can see, most of the names in the play are symbolic, which represents how manipulative and gossip-liking people they were. Careless is one of Charles Surf's drinking bodies, so he is one of his friends. Careless, true to his name, so he is actually a careless person, is even less responsible than Charles himself. Another character is Mrs. Clackett, an infamous gossip monger, who never appears in the play in person. Clackett is a loud noise made by striking two objects together, which is again a symbolic for her character and how she manipulates people and make and in fact gossips towards people. Miss Nicely, she is an acquaintance with a good reputation who the gossip manager say is pregnant out of wedlock and must marry her footman. We also have Miss Letita Pepper, a woman Car Crabtree says was falsely accused of giving birth to twins out of wedlock. So he gossips her and the maid a reputation that she had twins out of a relationship with another person called Wedlock. Miss Vermilion, an acquaintance smoked by the group of gossip monsters for the way she wears makeup. So the way she has her makeup, she has her makeup makes other people gossip her and mock her or make fun of her. Vermilion is a shade of red that could be used as blush. Again, it's a symbolic name which represents her character. Mrs. Prime, she is also one of the people mocked by the group of gossip. To be prime means to be stiff and overly proper. Mrs. Evergreen, another character mocked or made fun by the gossip people in the play for trying to look young forever, which is to stay evergreen. Miss 
simper. Another character mocked by the gossip people. To simper is to smile in a silly or overly self-deprecating way. So, as you can notice, that other than the name characters, Mr. Rowley, Sir Oliver, Joseph, Charles, Benjamin, Moses, Maria, Sir Peter Teasel, and Lady Teasel, all the minor characters are having symbolic names. We also have Trip and Charles Surface's Servant. Today, we discussed the play, the setting of the play and when it was made. We discussed a general background of the writer. We discussed the main characters in the play. Hope that you can study a little bit out of this small presentation and you can try to read more about the characters. Next time, inshallah, we are going to know more about the play itself and the plot summary, themes, and the most important quotations related to the play. After we finish the play, we have some articles in the book, in the memos that I gave you at the beginning of the semester that you can read and be asked about as exactly the same case in Hamlet. Thank you so much. Wish you the best. Feel free please to contact me and ask me any questions um, at any time. Thank you so much.